Hi, welcome to Back on Two Wheels, I'm Ian, and this is the second of a trilogy of videos I've put together, trying different mounting positions for the GoPro camera. I hope you enjoy, and by all means add a comment, as I know there's a lot of room for improvement. If you're happy to share my journey back into motorbikes, hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. Hi, welcome back. Hopefully you saw the first video with the harness uh, version. A um, little bit disappointed with the um, the outcome of that one. I was somehow hoping for it to be better. However, so what I did opened up the the box of goodies and decided to try out the the one that effectively wraps around your wrist. It's got a GoPro um, docking uh, piece on it with a. a strap and a velcro bit that wraps around in your wrist I must admit when I first um, when I first looked at it I thought who the hell was going to use that obviously it was me so um, there we go so this as you can see the um, you get more of where you're going but you also get your your mirror and your um, like your the handlebar got your hand guard in the way so um, obviously still not not perfect but um, it does give a, a slightly better uh, view of uh, where we're going and what we're doing um, the trip out on, in this event obviously the day was a lot nicer and um, got some sunshine there and instead of going out to the uh, west coast I was going out to the east coast, um, just up from sort of like the German border. You might see a little pink inflatable swan there. Okay, you don't see those every day of the week. Um, so yeah, it was uh, just up from the from the sort of jerk. So we we're fairly close to the German border. We're 21 miles away from uh, Delfzil, which is uh, where, where I'm headed today and um, it's a sort of 40 odd minute journey so I, I, I decided that I would make my way part of the way there and then, uh, and then get some, uh, some video footage en route. So I uh, normally set my sat nav so that it avoids motorways and tolls in which case I, I luckily get to take the the A roads, as we would call them, A's and B's. So um, it's a lot, it's a lot nicer as a, a riding experience than trying to tear down uh, dual carriageways and, and motorways. So yeah, so there we have it. As you can see, the um, the, the picture is fairly um, it's fairly wide in respect of where we're getting where we're going, as opposed to just the dash as it was last time, um, albeit a little bit of um, the mirror and handguard. So, yeah, so okay, let's, um, let's think about the actual uh, bike itself. It's a joy to ride. Um, yeah, it's not a, a road bias bike, it's a dual sport. Um, there, the, there is the intention to do some off-roading at some stage. Uh, as you can see from my other videos there, it's been a long time since I've, I've been on the road uh, on a motorbike. So, you know, ultimately getting, getting the, feel, the feeling back again, um, oh wait, you could argue it's a bit like riding a bike, which it is. So, um, uh, you know, settling in quite well, but getting a few miles under my belt on the road before I sort of um, start to get any sort of major off-roading in place is, uh, I think, the, the way to go. Getting a feel for the bike again. Um, and uh, enjoying it. Enjoying it a lot. Especially the uh, the drier days. I don't mind, I don't mind the uh, overcast. Um, obviously, uh, the less wet it is, the better. Um, so, there we are. But we've got some uh, lovely sunshine out there. 
on this uh, trip and yeah it was a nice warm day and yeah enjoy enjoyable the return actually although i didn't um video it i, I actually did the return uh, for some of this trip alongside the canal so i, I effectively found a place which which wasn't the A road, it was a sort of B road that meandered along beside uh, the canal over there. And um, yeah, that was nice for, for a good section of the, of the journey. Unfortunately, it wasn't being videoed, but for a good section of the journey, the journey was alongside the canal and it was nice and windy and, and everything. Um, Poland, you've, you've obviously You've not got too many hills. We're not going to be going up any um, uh, up any mountain sides or, or down any. So yeah, the roads are fairly long, fairly straight. Uh, so the the twists and turns aren't as as, as uh, regular. Uh, so you have to rely in somewhat on the roundabouts to give you give you a little bit of um, a feel in that respect. But um, nonetheless, it's a lovely country to to ride in and uh, the roads are well maintained it's all clean um, there's in all fairness there's nothing there's nothing not to like so um, the other the other week when i took a, a ride out uh, i did find a little bit of gravel didn't have the the video with me but um yeah found some some off-roady track i was actually looking for the tet which does happen to come up um, towards this this area that I'm staying in. The only um, negative that I've had so far is I was trying to download it and it, it wasn't, it didn't sort of download to the, the phone effectively. Since then, um, uh, one of the apps that I've got uh, for use of uh, like trail roads and things like this uh, for back in the UK, I've downloaded it onto that and I think that um, I should be able to use that in order to map my route. I haven't yet, but that will hopefully be coming up sometime in the future. So um, yeah, I look forward to um, enjoying some of the, uh, some of the Trans-European Trail while I'm out here. And obviously, if I'm, you know, for the, the longer I'm out here, the, um, the more chance I've got of exploring other areas as well, not just Holland, but sort of uh, skip down into uh, Belgium and France and up into uh, Germany. Maybe I'd like to sort of get up into uh, Denmark as well, because that's, uh, all right, it's a few hours. It's probably a good, it's probably good for four or five hours away from where I am to get to the border. But uh, maybe over a, a weekend I might be able to scoot up there and, and enjoy some, um, some Danish roads. Yeah. So we live in hope. Um, given a, a, a little bit of history uh, of, of my own sort of riding, as it were, I'm obviously um, pushing the, the candles on the cake nowadays. So um, 37 years since I've had a bike on the road. Um, the last one uh, that I actually had on the road was, was the RD350 LC in white and blue. Uh, lovely bike. It was, um, it was new when I bought it and it, they had literally just come out. I, I was originally gonna buy the RD400 when I passed my test with the square tank and opted uh, once I saw the new 350 that was on its way, I opted to wait and uh, get me all the placed on one of those. So I had one of the first RD350s. Um, lovely bike, very light, um, but uh, very fast too. Uh, nice and I, I sold that when I was 21 to a guy to go backpacking around Europe now obviously being 21 and stupid um, 
I obviously didn't realise that uh, maybe I should have taken the bike instead. But um, yeah, that's what um, that's what being a, a youngster teaches you. But hey, how did I know that was going to be um, worth a mint nowadays? The guy that I actually sold it to, I, I met him in a pub, I think about seven years ago and I was talking to him at the bar and he turned around and said to me, I still got your bike. It's got pride of place in my lounge. So um, you never know. He may still have it and he's got um, a lovely bike. It was it was mint when he bought it. Oh, I'm guessing it's still mint now. So yeah, lovely. I'd, um, I'd love the opportunity to have that bike back again, I guess. One of those things. So anyway, so, um, but uh, prior to that, uh, I passed my test on a uh, DT250 Yamaha uh, back in the day when you didn't have to do uh, a little sort of, uh, what's, it, what's it called even, a little assessment you do before you get your bike on the road, so, you know, that's, that, that's how long it's been. We just used to ride. Uh, when you're 17, you could get uh, a, a license to ride up to a 250 on a provisional. And that's what we generally did, because that was the biggest bike we was allowed to have. So 250 DT, uh, went and took a test down in Herm Bay in Kent. And the examiner effectively, uh, we we went up and down the roads, uh, which were uh, roads with like terrace houses and alleyways in between, and he'd send me off up the road, do a left, do a next left, and then he would run down the alley and watch as I um, went past or came around the corner or whatever I was doing, and then sort of jump out on me to do an emergency stop. So it was probably easier to get a license in those days. Um, less um, problems with too many people on the road I guess as well so um, yeah it was, it was good times good times prior to that um, as far as on the road was a um, the first bike I had was uh, belonged to my brother got handed down um, a Yamaha Fizzy FS1E DX with the disc brake uh, in yellow with the, the black speed blocks on it um, yeah what can I say it, it, you know there's uh, a bit of embarrassment for myself it even had uh, at one point when I first got it on the road it even had uh, ace bars on it um, so there you go um, how can you race a fizzy but anyway we did what we did so and then before that, before I was uh, 16, we'd have, um, we lived near fields, so the guys that I was uh, knocking about with, a few of them were older, you know, all of similar age, but some, some were a bit older. We had, uh, well, they had uh, BSA Bantams, um, Vespers, Lambrettas, all sorts of things that they just used to, sort of get up and run in and, and run around the edge of the, the fields near us. Um, so yeah, that was where my my early experiences of, of riding came from. Um, and the, in fact, my, my very first, the very first experience on a motorbike, I was uh, in a friend's garden. He had, a, I believe it was, a Lambretta, could have been a Vespa, they all look the same to me. And um, basically, they were, his, his parents had a, a house with quite a large uh, garden, they had a big uh, vegetable patch in, in the middle at the back of the garden, and we'd effectively do laps around the, uh, around the vegetable patch. And, they were doing this, so it was sort of said, go on, you have a go, you have a go, yeah, yeah, fine, it's okay, just do this, just do that. So the first thing I did was 
um, opened it up, went through the fence, uh, or what would have been a fence if there had been a, a proper fence there, into an orchard next door. So then we got it back. We started going around again. So then I was going around again, and I was going around this little circuit, and been around a couple of times, only taking it easy. And um, they, were, they were telling me to open it up, open it up, you were saying. So I, I opened it up a bit, and I was, there was a bit of a slope coming up towards back towards the house and as I opened it up I slid back on the seat because these scooters had the big long seats on them so I opened it up slid back on the seat which just meant I opened it up even more when tearing up towards the house up onto the um, path again because this was sort of grass that I was on up onto the path and went smash into his um, into the house it was me laying on the deck, the bike laying on the deck, screaming. Uh, not me screaming, the bike that is. And, and my, my mate's going to try and, trying to stop it. He ends up pulling the, the spark plug, HT lead off, and um, getting chucked across the vegetable patch. And then his dad's coming out, and going, what the hell's going on? I thought there was a bomb had gone off. So, um, that was effectively the very first, um, very first time that I'd uh, had my uh, biking experience, as it were. So, um, yeah, everyone's got it. You, you've got to have. It's, you've got to have your first time uh, with everything. So um, there we are. So um, thank you to Aidy for that. If you. Um, you watch this uh, bit, Aidy. Now yeah, you've got to mention me. Um, so there we are. So moving on from from that, uh, what's what's next? Um, obviously, this this particular setup on the wrist isn't going to be the the ideal the ideal setup. Um, I don't mind it as much. I can see what's going on. You can see a bit of uh, action, as it were, in so far as my hand, changing gear. That's about it. And then, and then maybe I'm doing the old lifting it up so that I can see something from time to time. Um, is it the way forward? I don't think so. In real terms, we're going to have to um, revisit revisit what's on there there's there's some various clamps and bits and pieces in it. and the uh, the next one I think we'll try and um, set it up on some of those see if there's a, an alternative um, rather than being fixed to myself as it were in, in some way so um, the only concern there I guess would be whether or not any vibrations from the, the bike would, would affect the picture quality. Um, no, we'll see. We'll see. The next one, you would obviously uh, know the answer to that. Um, now, as far as that goes, moving forward into uh, hopefully um, COVID free days, if we're still in 2020, obviously, um, we need to. Uh, think about I, I want to get some some longer sort of journeys out I want to get some some off-roading and but also some proper run outs and then get hot, slightly better at this uh, video in video editing I'm obviously not using a mic in the in the helmet I'm I'm sort of uh, putting some some voice onto this right you know after the event so I need to get myself uh, set up on, with those sort of things, find out what I'm going to use and how I'm going to use it. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see. Um, if, if anyone's going to the, the Adventure Bike uh, event, festival, in I think it's June 21, um, I'll then see you there. Hopefully I'll, I'll pick up lots of tips from various suppliers of, of all sorts of uh, things to, uh, to make these uh, videos a bit better um, 
and what I'd like to do is to get to a few shows when they do start having shows and then sort of you know, video some of the some of the sort of cool bikes uh, that are there. Um, maybe get to uh, speak to some of the people that, that own them. Maybe build them if they're if they're custom bikes or whatever. Um, yeah, and just uh, get a bit more, um, a bit more sort of things that are more interesting to to watch rather than a trip out to the coast, which isn't a bad thing to go back and see. Over the other side of the uh, of this restaurant, there is sort of there's some land over there, and that's Germany or part of it. There's uh, islands and bits and pieces over there, but uh, yeah, the destination is on your left. We're just um, over the wall from, from Germany there. Anyway, okay. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one.